Hey guys! So today we're going to analyze chapters 14, 15, and 16. You should have already listened to the chapters by now. Just listening to these analyze the text videos won't give you all of the information that you need. We're touching on the high points. So you don't want to miss all of the details. So if you haven't listened <clears throat> to chapter 14, 15, and 16 yet, stop this video, go listen to your chapters, and then come back. So I hope that you're enjoying Hatchet so far. I really love Brian as a character and watching how he changes and grows in the book and throughout the story. In chapters 14, 15, and 16, you will really start to see how Brian has changed and learned. Chapter 14 starts out with the word mistakes. And Brian makes a lot of mistakes while he is um, in the wilderness. He obviously doesn't know anything about um, being a survivalist. He has to learn it all on his own. However, the thing that's really interesting about Brian and I think is the key to his survival is that every time he makes a mistake, every time something bad happens to him, he learns from that. And then he takes what he has learned and uses it to help um, better him in the future. So in chapter 14, um, we find out that Brian has had a run-in with a skunk. So a skunk comes into the camp. The, the skunk is not worried about the fact that there's a fire or a human around. He sees Brian's stash of turtle eggs and eats them. When Brian says, um, tries to shoo the skunk away, the skunk does what skunks do and sprays him. So that's not, not a great experience, I'm sure. But after that, Brian takes that information and he says, okay, I've got to do something. My food keeps getting stolen and I don't like this. So he finds a ledge that's at the top of his shelter, a little rock ledge, and he finds a ladder or a, a log with some branches sticking out and creates a ladder so that he can climb up to this ledge and store his food out of reach of animals. Not only that, but he also crafts a little gate, fence, um, so that even birds can't get in and get his food. So Brian is learning from his mistakes. Later, we see at the end of chapter 14, he realizes that he really um, would like to make life easier for him. So he comes up with an idea and he creates a little fish pond where he puts uh, food scraps and the fish come into the little food pond. Um, so they're right there, easily accessible for him to catch and eat. Unfortunately, at the end, it gives us a little bit of foreshadowing and says, um, little does he know how sick he would get of fish. And I can imagine because eating the same thing over and over is not the best thing. So going into chapter 15, chapter 15 is, um, talking about Brian learning how to actually hunt he gets what he calls his first meat. So he spends a lot of time in the woods and he realizes that if you pay close enough attention that the full birds that drive him so crazy, you can actually see the shape of their bodies. And so he used that knowledge to be able to pick out the full birds and he was able to kill one and then eat it. And it's the first time that he's had red meat since he's been in the wilderness. And, you know, one of the driving things for Brian is hunger. He's always hungry. And he was able to kill this um, full bird. And he said it tasted just like his mom's chicken. So it reminds him of being at home. And again, we realize Brian learns from being in the wilderness. So he is constantly using the information that he's learning to help adjust so that he can survive. And we see he's really changing um, from the beginning of the story until now. He's sticking with things. He's not giving up. He's really learning everything that he can about his environment 
so that he can be moderately comfortable and successful where he's at. In chapter 16, um, we learn that Brian um, finally makes an arrow that can fly. Um, it talks about his first days. So he was able to um, use an arrow to kill a full bird. And then he ended up being able to kill a rabbit, a first rabbit day. So things are really looking up for Brian, even though he still talks about that deep hunger. He has a little bit more security knowing that he is able to get food when he needs it. So he may not have a completely full belly all the time like we do, but he has some security knowing that food is available. But then our author reminds us of just how quickly things can change in the wilderness. And so Brian talks a lot about luck and how um, bad luck, or if you trace good luck back, you can always find bad luck. And so we're going to see Brian has a couple of strokes of really bad luck. So first, he's attacked by a moose for no apparent reason. He's out hunting, he kills an animal, and then a moose attacks him and nearly drowns him. He's very injured. He manages to get back to his shelter and um, he's very injured. And so he lays down to sleep. Well, that's not the end of Brian's bad luck because that night, He's awakened by a roaring no noise, and we're from um, south. We know what this roaring noise is. It's a tornado, and tornadoes are scary, but they're even scarier when you don't have a proper shelter to get away from them. So his fire is blown on him. Everything is uh, torn out of his shelter. He's already in pain because he's been attacked by a moose, but now he's also being tossed about in his shelter. So his whole shelter is torn apart. All of the work that he's done, all of the food that he's collected, everything is torn apart. We find out he, even his food pond that he had created was torn apart. And it was a pretty dramatic event. But instead of being uh, despondent and upset, Brian says, all right, this is my next challenge and I will, um, I'll take it. I can um, handle this. I'll fix it. I'll come back stronger than I was before. And um, probably one of the hardest parts is that Brian loses his fire. So he has to spend the entire night dealing with mosquitoes, which we know um, has been a pretty big deal um, for Brian. And so then um, in the morning, he gets to survey the damage and it's pretty bad. He's lost a lot of stuff. Um, but we end this chapter with Brian seeing the plane. And those of you who remember back to chapters one and two, you might be thinking, what could be in that plane that could help Brian? Could this bad luck turn into good luck for Brian? I, I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, guys. So thanks for sticking with me for chapters um, 13, uh, 14, 15, and 16, and we will see you next time. Bye.